Hello everyone, it's Yentan here, and welcome to my series of CSM interviews. By the time you listen to this, all of the interviews will have been conducted, as I wanted to make sure that all the questions were asked of all the participants before the questions were made public. Hopefully this will serve to make sure that the interview platform is a relatively balanced one, as no candidate has been able to sit down and really research and prepare an answer in advance. Everything that the people answer here is going to be off the cuff. In order to give a bit of background as to who I am and what relation I have with the CSM, I've served on the previous three terms and am not planning to run for CSM 14. However, I wanted to lend my expertise, at least to some degree, to the election process, and I thought that the best way to do this was to highlight some specific candidates who I thought were interesting and had captured some level of public support. Anyway, with all that said, let's swiftly switch focus over to the subject of our interview. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you've decided to run for the CSM. Hi, I am Matt Arong, and I am the host of Talking in Stations, which is a podcast about EVE Online. And we do a number of different streams and we capture live events and we have a Discord that has about 2,500 people on it. And so I'm the founder and manager of that. Um, I'm also a longtime player uh, from Northern Coalition. And uh, I've been there for years. And I've been playing since 2008 and mostly worked my way up into through the PVP path into NullSec. And, uh, uh, but I've done a great number of different things in the game along the way. And so now I would consider myself a student of the game. I look at it and try to appreciate what other people are doing in the game and try to get those stories out to the public. One of the first sessions that the CSM will typically have at a summit is a meeting with the upper leadership of EVE Online's development team. Typically during this meeting, the CSM has tried to present a list of three to four points that all members agree need work on during this meeting. What is a point that you feel deserves to be on this list for your first summit? Is that something that CCP has asked you to do or is that something the summit, uh, the CSM decided to do on their own? It's something the CSM uh, was originally started doing because of an exercise that CCP did with us. To get your heads together before you come into this meeting, well, I don't see, I don't see a whole lot of value in that. Uh, I'm not going to answer your question directly because I'm, I'm just kind of, it kind of boxes me into a premise that that's necessarily a good thing to do. What I would say is, if I'm going to play that game, uh, something that something that needs to be put in there is that we need new features, basically. We need p things to attract players that um, are interested in EVE, but don't necessarily want to take the plunge. So we need those kinds of hooks to bring new players in. So I would say, in general, less balance, more new feature development. During CSM 12, I was asked to suggest three areas of the game that I felt CCP would gain a lot from working on. If you had to do the same thing, what three areas of the game would you suggest? Um, the three things that I would want uh, if they asked me, or it's basically what I just said. I want to see uh, new features. Uh, I want to see uh, scamming nerfed, basically, in a different... I, I, I foresee scanning, scamming as a whole different can you, thing can you, it is right Can now. you focus in on that at all? Like, you, you say new yeah. features. What do you mean by new features? I want new forms of gameplay. Uh, I think, you know, a good example of something that could have turned into a new feature is the war deck mechanic changes. Uh, to me, that was more of a balance pass than anything that re reimagines what could be done with two corporations in the future going to war. Um, just saying like, okay, now the people who are attacking you are vulnerable in a way, um, that creates interesting mechanic play for people who are already playing this game. And, I, and it will create behavioral change, which is good. But I, I don't see that as anything that would attract a new player. Uh, what would attract a new player is something like you can enter into somebody else's war, um, you know, uh, without getting killed by the authorities for doing it, by uh, some kind of mechanism to get involved, whatever that may be. So that allows a player who basically is a, a bystander to stick his foot in the pool to test the water to see if that's something they might be interested in. And I don't see how that works. There's also a whole thing of uh, is the action is the deliberate intention first or is the action 
uh, creating the, mo the motive first? In other words, do you say, I'm going to war, now we'll fight a war, and now the war ends? Or do you say, I don't like this group, I'm just going to pick on them. I'm not declaring war, I'm just doing what I want to do, and now the war is on because I have damaged that corporation to a certain degree. And now they have the ability to say, um, to declare an official war with authority or something like that. Like right now, we have a bribing system where you basically pay off the authorities to be able to do what you want to do in high six space to a particular group. And what was changed there, it was just an extension of that. And I do don't think it was reimagined. So when I talk about new features, I'm talking about reimagining how features will play, not inside the game, not inside the game, but outside the game as well. One second. All right. Well, that's, that's nothing that let's, let's talk about scamming. The, the second thing, scamming being nerfed. So, can you elaborate on that a little bit? What do you define as scamming in the first place? Because that's a very, very broad topic. Yeah, scamming can be done in really sophisticated ways, which I really like. And scamming can be done in really stupid ways, which I don't. And I think the, the, the dumb things are that you can rename, for instance, contracts uh, to something they're not. And that is just trickery. It's sleight of hand. And there's no, <clears throat> how can I put it? There's no uh, expectation of result by the player. So if I'm looking for something and I'm trying to get involved in this game and I think, oh, here's a something that I need to buy. Somebody told me to buy this sort of thing, so I'll buy it. Oh, wait a minute, I got something else. That is a really weak sleight of hand that to me says, well, this game really, I mean, it, this game really sucks because I don't even get the thing that I'm trying to get. It's not that I've been tricked in a in a manipulative, brilliant way, it's that somebody uh, just tricked me with the mechanics. So I believe this in many things. Uh, I, one of the things that I would say we need to focus on is that when a player is doing a thing, he should have a deliberate result. He should, he should if he's gonna dock in a place that says that he can dock, he should be able to dock. As you know, I got picked off because somebody switched from one instant to the next, my ability to dock. and Sure, I was pissed off about that. Uh, who wouldn't be? But and I try to save myself, and who wouldn't? Um, but what I what bothered me about that is is I had an expectation of a result. I had done my planning, and I had an expectation of a result because I had been thorough, and it didn't come to pass because oh yes, this mechanic can do can do this thing where they can basically turn off the lights on you, and uh, I, I find those kinds of mechanics are not good. So scamming very much falls into this. People are doing a trade in a window and right before you hit return, they add a zero on it so that you give them a magnitude more money than you meant to. That's not good gameplay. That's um, insulting gameplay for the person who is devastated, right? And that's the problem. It's not that this thing hurts a player, it's that it can devastate a player. And, and I don't see that as something to write about. That's not okay. something like a heist where it's planned and there are operatives and it's super sexy because because there's so much planning involved. It's basically just a dumb mechanic that somebody knows and somebody else doesn't know. Okay. Well, I'd like to move you on. And can you give me the third thing that you would uh, like to talk about here? You know? the, the other thing I would want to see is um, uh, definitely a, uh, a couple things, a couple more things if I could do four. One is I would like to see the market have some updates to it. I feel the market hasn't been touched in 2003 when Hillmar built it. And I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. I mean, you have incredible financial modeling that can be done in real life. You don't have any of that sexiness inside the game. So I would do, I would say, hey, pay attention to the market. There's some gameplay there. Make it easier to enter the market as someone who doesn't understand the complexity of it, but also make tools that are advanced for people who really want to get into that. I think there's a lot of room there. Uh, the other thing, that I would do is to give some kind of active decision making to industrialists. Right now, all of industrial, all the industrial gameplay there is, is to reduce your costs, right? And and NullSec is much better capable of doing that than anybody in high sex space. But there's really no active gameplay that you can do. There is with PI, and there is with uh, obviously with PVE and stuff like that, because you have to actively do something to make it to do it better and to make more money at it. 
Um, but with uh, industry, there really isn't anything like that. So it seems like a lot of the things that you're proposing there are really, really big kind of efforts for CCP to undertake. Do you reasonably think that the CSM will be able to achieve a change within CCP that can make those happen? No, but I'm not, I'm not out to affect a change. I'm out to, uh, to give a different position and angle to, uh, as an advice to CCP. I don't have, again, an agenda, nor am I carrying somebody else's agenda. But what I want to do is say, look, the guys that have been here before, Nullsec mostly, right? Incumbents mostly are really fine and they're great and they're very good at the game, but they're working within a certain framework, whether they know it or not. And what I'm saying is I come from an advertising background. I come from an entertainment advertising background. Uh, I'm a creative and I'm also a technical person. It doesn't mean that I'm an expert in anything, but what I'm saying to them is, look, there are people who don't play this game that are very interested in this game. And you know that because every time there's an article out there about EVE Online, some of the comments will say, I love reading about this game. I would never play it. And that is really strange to me because it can be a virtual world that people can exist in without all the pressure of being good at it. And I think we're missing out on a lot of the draws that those people would rely on, like a really interesting heist market uh, place that is not only everything built by players, but has sophisticated market tools. Um, exploration, real exploration, where you can actually get lost and stumble upon things. And all the things that aren't PvP related, aren't epic battles. That stuff has draws too. But some of the things like the Voyage of Katya say is also a draw to a lot of people who have a different kind of imagination. So to answer your question, though, no, I don't have a laundry list, nor do I have an agenda, but I am somebody that could talk about their marketing and I could talk about how EVE is perceived, not just by players who have all the time in the world to play it, but by players who love thinking about it, planning for it, or people who just like reading about it. Part of being a member of the CSM is being able to explain gameplay patterns or uses of mechanics that feel broken to CCP in order to explain why you think that they're not something is healthy for the game. Can you describe something that you have experience with that you perceive to be broken, or at the very least overpowered, and explain why it is such in your view? Yeah, I can, but I first say that that's not necessarily my strength. I'm not gonna look at the game and say, uh, here's how you fix your game. Uh, again, I'm not that kind of candidate. I'm the kind of candidate, whether it's useful or not, will depend on, uh, what people think out there in the CSM is a, is a candidate that can basically uh, sit at the table with CCP and say, uh, look, we want, we want things that bring new players in. We want to retain those players. We want to work on your messaging to players in, inside the game and outside the game. Um, and here, here are some of the things that you should keep into consideration as you are making mechanics. And I think that's the role that I would fit better uh, than an expert game about what mechanics A, B, or C, or D. If, if I wanted to come into this as a junior dev, then I would, right? I'd get good at that. Uh, but that's not what I want to do, nor is that what I'm good at. Uh, that said, one of the things I said earlier that really bothers me is the expected result. And, and again, uh, being able to switch off um, you know, a permissions list instantly is, it just seems like bad gameplay to me. So I would, I would say, yeah, you need a delay. If you're going to say, okay, uh, you can no longer dock here. I need that to take five minutes and I want blinkies all around the structure. So it can be, it can be visible that something's changing for you. The CSM has to give input on many areas, even on things that aren't normally thought of as coming under the CSM's purview, like UI design. In fact, a meeting with the UI team, Team Psycho Sisters, is a part of most summits. As such, can you describe a part of the UI that you interact with heavily and identify a problem with it when used in the way that you operate it? Uh, yeah, the, the UI for me is definitely a ton of writing, and I like the uh, radial menu. I think that's a good thing. I think that was a good way of developing, especially for new players. I wouldn't say there's anything specific that I have trouble with. I've been playing this game for 10 years or 12. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really, there's nothing that I haven't figured out. Um, what I would say is to look at 
people's experience when they come into the game and what their paths are and what their intuition tells them. So if you're doing UI, are you doing it for advanced players or are you doing it for new players? And can you do it for both? Those are the kinds of uh, fundamental questions that you know need to be answered. And if you can't, then who do you favor? What's the priority? Uh, I think one example is, I think somebody put this up somewhere. I forget where. It might have been Reddit. I have a Reddit feed. I, I don't actually uh, go there that often, but I get a feed so I can see everything that's posted, whether it's deleted or not. And uh, I think if you right-click on something, it it basically says three things on the menu. And the person who posted it said, all I want to do is change the color, which you can do, but it's you know you have to pick that, and then you pick the secondary menu. And what that person was saying was, look, I'm an experienced player and all I want to do is color this. And I was thinking, well, okay, you're an experienced player and you have a reason to want to color it. And so you want to get there faster. But there are players who are coming into this that don't understand uh, what, what the benefits of coloring something are. And so if you only limit it to what advanced players want on the UI, then you're going to lose a lot more of the newer players. So, you, so do, do, would you say that you think you have a good eye on how a new player would approach an uh, approach a UI feature then, and you feel like you'd be able to give advice on that? No, I'm I'm not a new player. It's hard for me to unknow what I already know. <clears throat> I wouldn't be the person that would be able to do that. I would just advise CCP that you know, as much pressure as the other nine CSM are saying, let's do this, let's do that. I would remind them to to say these. These uh, all need to be taken into consideration for a new guy because retention is something that Eve has always struggled with. And the complication of Eve Online is both something that allures, pe uh, allures people in, but also keeps people out. And a lot of players will say, well, that's a good thing because we don't want those kinds of players in. And I disagree with that. I think there's some of those good players that we're missing out on. Monetization is often a dirty word within the player base. However, as you're running for the CSM, you hopefully understand that it's a necessary part of CCP continuing to exist, while still something to be safeguarded against becoming too rampant. What is a new area of monetization that you would argue against, and what would be your argument as to convince CCP on why it shouldn't be done? You know, I know, I know that monetization is a big deal to people. It's not a big deal to me. If the game can make money uh, by selling objects like God, like uh, Fortnite can and make uh, however much gazillions of dollars they're making. I'm all for it. I don't see any problem with it. Uh, I think what they've done generally in the past has been good as far as a guideline, but this is not something I'm passionate about. I don't care if CCP sells bullets to do a little more damage, frankly. I, I don't see that as completely destabilizing the game because the game's not all about PVP. The game's about other things too. Um, so I, I honestly, when I look at this uh, and CCP has certain things they want to do and now they have, now the pressure's on, right? Because they're owned by Pearl Abyss and Pearl Abyss made what, $1 billion last year in grosses. Uh, I'd say they know what they're doing, but their game is mostly say for the Korean market and the Western market's a lot different than that, different sensibilities. So you have to think about that. Uh, still, I don't. I, when I look at monetization, I want CCP to do as much as they can, even if they sell literature like they did before with books and magazines. Um, that kind of stuff I love. I love collect. I have every Eon magazine. I have every book they've published. I love reading the stuff and owning it. I love owning it. That's a big deal too. Inside the game, I think they've done just cosmetic stuff, and I think that's fine. I don't know why they still sell clothes. I guess it's for people who want portraits and stuff like that. Maybe they'll open up gameplay with avatars later and you'll have all this you know, wardrobe when we get there. Who knows? But um, skins, I guess if people want to look at their ships, it's all been fine. It's all been cosmetic. Uh, I don't know if I have a line to draw. I would need to, I would need to actually hear what the arguments are for and against. And my advice would come in the form of, does this help people get attracted to the game and does it hurt the actual player base that's already here and does it and that's probably where i would draw the line does it hurt the actual player base that's here how much and in what way because here's the thing people will cry about the smallest things and i'm not making fun of anybody 
I shouldn't say cry. People will be upset about the smallest things when in actuality, it's not hurting them that much. So, Manarol, if you're elected to the CSM, what would you do in order to differentiate yourself from the other members of the CSM? I think everything I've said here differentiates me from the group that's there now. I might be wrong, but uh, I, I'm coming at this from a different perspective. It's not this null sec, high sec, low sec, faction war, wormhole. I, you know, there's, there's expertise that need to be on this council to answer the nuts and bolts questions to be the reflective player base devs, if you will. Uh, and that's not what I would bring, but I think that's what's been there for the most part. You even have a third party guy in Steve who knows how to build software outside the game to support the game, which is an amazing thing. But you even have that guy as a player expert, right? So we have player experts who mostly, I think would say that PVP is the heart and soul of EVE Online and uh, have made decisions or influenced CCP in a way to constantly rebalance it for people who are already playing the game. And I don't reject that. I understand the importance of that, but I want an additional voice myself to be in there saying, let's think about attracting new players. Let's think about the imagination of the game. Let's think about what people talk about to each other about this game and what would draw new people to the game and draw old players back. So for my final directed question, what other non-incumbent candidate would you most like to see elected? You know, this is a question I think that's, um, I don't know what it's supposed to tell the audience, like who I have things in common with. Like, uh, I'm not rejecting your question, but I'm just saying. Uh, it's generally just a good way for us. Well, from my perspective, the reason why I ask this question is because I mm -hmm. want to know what other candidates have you talked to? You know, are you someone who is out there talking to other candidates and trying mm -hmm. to see what they're about and absorb their ideas and their expertise? Or are you just sitting there and taking a safe candidate? Like, if someone says Steve, I know that they don't actually yeah, yeah. care about the election and they're just focusing on themselves. Exactly. That's why I hate this question with when Cap Stable was asking it and I hate it now. Well, I think which, it's which a way is why I said non incumbent, but okay. Oh, not incumbent. Okay, you changed it up a little bit. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I feel like it's a way of saying, look, this appreciate name and this is who I talk to or whatever. And I, and I talk to everybody. I talk to the smallest people, the new guys that jump on Discord. I talk to the, uh, you know, uh, everybody. There's nobody I won't talk to and there's nobody that I can't talk to. I don't, I, I think I'm one of the few people, and this is, I may be wrong and somebody will start to prove me wrong after I say this out loud, but there's no, if I call, I will get my call returned by just about anybody in the game. And that's not because I'm somebody uh, special in the game. That's because they can trust me to have a conversation that won't be used against them or any of that sort of thing. And what that does and what I've built over the years is a reputation as somebody who is considerate and somebody who will uh, talk to you about ideas and actually give you a fair shake without all the predisposition of what's been said in the past. My knowledge is earned. It's not collected and reflected. Uh, so when I talk to somebody, as you've seen in this interview, about issues of EVE Online, I don't have the pat answers that everybody has. And in this case, it's the same thing. I don't want to say, I like Steve because everybody likes Steve. Or uh, I would talk to FCs because I'm that kind of guy and I like PVP and those are the guys I relate to. Or I talk to Aerith because I like the world building and empire building. This is, um, sorry, those are incumbents, but the same thing with anybody like them. I talk to Tuzzy, I talk to Matai, I talk to Vince Drake and I talk to Lady Scarlet. You know, it's the same thing. I'm not defining myself by players that are famous or players that are interesting to other people. I've always defined myself from the common man perspective. And I think that's who I am, uh, if that's what you're after with that. All right, well, with all that done, I'm done with my questions. I'd like to give you a few moments here to make any final remarks and to put a full stop on why you think the listeners should vote for you. And of course, thank you for your time. I think everything I've said here differentiates me from the group that's there now. I might be wrong, but uh, I, I'm coming at this from a different perspective. It's not this null sec, high sec, low sec, faction war, wormhole. I, you know, there's, there's expertise that need to be on this council to answer the nuts and bolts questions, to be the reflective player base devs, if you will, 
Uh, and that's not what I would bring. But I think that's what's been there for the most part. You even have a third party guy in Steve who knows how to build software outside the game to support the game, which is an amazing thing. But you even have that guy as a player expert, right? So we have player experts who mostly, I think, would say that PVP is the heart and soul of EVE Online and uh, have made decisions or influenced CCP in a way to constantly rebalance it for people who are already playing the game. And I don't reject that. I understand the importance of that, but I want an additional voice myself to be in there saying, let's think about attracting new players. Let's think about the imagination of the game. Let's think about what people talk about to each other about this game and what would draw new people to the game and draw old players back. Okay. So for my final so for my final directed question, what other non-incumbent candidates would you most like to see elected alongside yourself or perhaps in place of yourself if you aren't lucky enough to be elected? Yeah, that's fine. And well, with all that said, I'd just like to give you a few moments to make any final remarks and to put a full stop on why you think listeners should vote for you. Well, here's the thing. You have to really understand what the CSM is about, like Jintan does. And uh, of course, they know through experience, the people who have been through CSM, and I know through reading the literature and reading the minutes over and over and over again, year after year, what I think the CSM is about. And I think you need a variety of voices. You're going to have FCs. You're going to have NullSec. You may have a wormholder if they can all rally around Exuki, who I support, by the way. <laughs> um, so you're going to have player experts, but is that all the CSM is for? Because what that's led to, in my opinion, is a reinforcement uh, from CCP that the game needs balance. And I think it does, but it needs more than balance. It needs stuff that pulls new players in, old players that, have, that are thinking about it, uh, and it gives people the imagination to talk about EVE Online, even if they're not playing the PvP side of the game. It's, there's a million things that this game does, and we seem to only talk about PvP and tournaments and epic battles. Uh, and I'm a big part of that. I do that because that's what the audience wants that watches the meta but there are so many people that don't watch the meta or don't watch media so many people that are interested in other things and i would like to see them representative represented and i think that i could do a good job because i always think of the game in terms of a wide world that you live in i will say one other thing uh as far as who i am it's taken a long time to do this and i never wanted to run for csm i actually didn't think that it was something I would ever do. Um, but the reason I'm running for CSM now is because I've watched over the last many years, um, essentially a takeover of PVP, mostly nullsec players. Yeah, they're from different corners of the game, but they all have the same sandbox. They're all stuck in the same box, right? Uh, they would never have conceived of a group like Signal Cartel. They would never have conceived of a website like Eve Travel, and they would never have conceived of doing the journey through all the wormholes and all the systems in the entire map like Katya Seya did. These guys, they don't, it's not that they don't value that, but they can't think of that. And we need somebody in there that stands uh, not apart from them because it's all group work, but in addition to them to remind CCP that the imagination of, of EVE Online is one of the biggest draws to the game. And it's the reason that people invest in a game like this. So okay. I'll close with this. I'll close with this. You can vote for your ballot. A lot of you are just gonna vote your ballot and do your duty to your alliance. And I respect that. But if you could do me the favor, if you believe in some of the stuff I've talked about, vote for me first, position one, and then vote your full ballot. Your guys are going to get in, and I'll get in too. And you'll have a diversity of voices.